So during the near 10th anniversary live stream, which was hosted at the end of March 2020, it was revealed by Square Enix that Nier Replicant, the original canon version of Nier released in Japan exclusively on the PlayStation 3, is getting an enhanced definitive edition for the game. This is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Hasn't been revealed as either a remaster or remake, but rather a one-up version, having additions and enhancements to it. Now there are many additions that they can add to this game, some of which have already been briefly detailed or hinted at. However, there's a lot in the Nier series that has been expanded upon since the release of the original game, both the Japanese version and even the Xbox 360 version in Japan, which later became the Western release of the game. How's it going everyone? Tazen here, and today I'm going to go through 10 additions I believe are a must-have for the Nier Replicant Enhanced Edition. So the first edition I believe is a must-have is adding the Ending E epilogue to the game. So the game itself had four endings in it, A to D, and a fifth ending, which was an epilogue to ending D, was actually later released inside the World Guidebook for Nier. It's called the Grimoire Nier World Book. It's this book right here, and it was actually written into it as an epilogue. So this came out after the game was released. Now that that ending E has been established and Nier Automata continues along that timeline, it'd be fantastic to add that into the game. Now in terms of adding into the game, I don't think it should be added in just as a form of cutscene, but rather as a playable little chapter. It could only be even one to two hours in length, but I think it would be fantastic. And furthermore, when you actually finish ending D of the game, your game save file actually gets deleted. Now what this does is not only wipe your save data, but it updates the actual game data that you've got on your console. So what this changes is two things. One, when you actually try and make a new game, you're not allowed to name near the same name. It has to be named a different name to the one that you selected in the original playthrough. And two, the actual background on the menu screen for the opening of it has actually changed to reflect that of a certain character. Now given this epilogue actually revolves around that specific character without naming who it is, I think it would be awesome that this epilogue actually becomes available after the save data has been deleted and you can access it from that menu of the game. Reason being is the way that the epilogue takes place, it's several years after the final ending, so I don't feel that in terms of the pacing of and the impact of ending D, I think it shouldn't be something that just gets shown straight away after the credits, otherwise it may sort of adjust the way that you respond to ending D. So rather by having it as something you can access from the menu after, especially if that's a playable chapter, then again, that can sort of change sort of the way that you digest that final part of the ending without having it sort of forced on you straight away post credits and then all of a sudden you perceive the game slightly differently than how it was originally intended. Going on to the second edition, I believe is a must have, is to make Kaine playable, specifically during the second playthrough of the second part of the game. So what I mean by this is similar to way Nier Automata does it, is you have an initial playthrough as 2B, and then you have a second playthrough for the same part of the game as 9S. Now during that playthrough, not only do you get to play as 9S, you get to learn more about his backstory, and you also get to learn more about the backstory of the enemies in the game. Now this is actually an improvement upon what was done in Nier Replicant and Nier Gestalt, because on the second playthrough, you were taken back to a certain part of the game. It's roughly about 60 to 70 percent of the way through the game, and you then replay the final 10 or so hours of the game. But rather, when you do this on the second time, you firstly get to learn a bit more about the backstory of Kaine, one of the main supporting characters, and you also get to learn the backstory of the enemies that you fight throughout the game, similar to Nier Automata. The only difference being that you don't actually get to play as Kaine through that second playthrough, but rather you replay it as Nier again. So I think this would be awesome to add her because it will actually make you feel a bit more immersed in her backstory as you're playing through it. And it will give a cool sense of replayability, playing as a different character, a different attack style given she uses dual blades. And overall I think it will be fantastic for that replayability in terms of going back and redoing a certain part of the game. It will make it feeling even a bit more fresh. Moving on to the third thing I think is a must have or an awesome addition to Nier Replicant's enhanced version is having the third playthrough allowing you to then learn more about Devil and Popola's backstory and things that are going on with them. Reason being is in order to get all the endings in Nier, not only do you have to play through it two times, but rather a third time. So on the first time you get ending A, the second time you go through that final 10 hours you get ending B, and then on the third time, 
you redo those final 10 hours just to collect every weapon in the game so you can then get ending C or ending D at the end depending on which you choose. The thing is when you go back for that part of the game for the third time it's actually identical to what you witnessed during the second time so it's not adding in anything new other than that it just allows you the time to make sure to get all the weapons so you can unlock those ending C and D. So again, it sort of started to feel like that was a part where the game felt a bit sort of repetitive or redundant because you were just trying to get through it as quick as possible and get those weapons if you hadn't already gotten them on the second playthrough. So by adding a bit more to other characters and learning a bit more about what's going on with them, again, it can really enhance every single part of the playthrough for the game. The fourth addition I believe is must needed for the enhanced version of Near Replicant is to add the stories to the weapons, specifically as you upgrade them too. So what I mean by this is in Near Automata, when you got weapons, they all had stories. They were just a brief paragraph or sentence telling you something about a story and each time you upgraded those weapons, you got an extra paragraph telling you more and more. Now there were actually stories originally associated with all the weapons in Near. However, it didn't actually make its way into the game itself, but rather they were published later in the Japanese exclusive Near World book. So all the stories do exist, they're just currently in Japanese written format with only fan translations online. This is the perfect opportunity to bring them into the game itself. The fifth addition I believe is a must have or will be fantastic for this enhanced version is to add the Nier Audio Drama CD to it. So Nier also got an Audio Drama CD alongside of it and it features a really important part about the characters during a very pivotal part of the game's story but rather a part not in which you play but taking place before the events of the game. Now these sort of parts of the story is actually told only in Japanese format. The audio CD was recorded just for the Japanese audience so we don't actually have an English version of it but rather again fan translated versions written and published online. Now I believe these parts of the story are really pivotal to some of the characters if not all of them so I think it would be a must have to have this accessible in some form in the game. Whether that being retelling these events at some parts of the game or also having it as something that unlocks after you get ending A and being again something that you can access from the main menu. Now in terms of it being unlocked after ending A, the reason I suggest that is because it does contain a lot of stuff that not only are somewhat spoilers in regards if you were to listen to it before the end of the game, but it also wouldn't make sense because it does expand upon things that you learn about during the end of the first playthrough. So having it then accessible after that first playthrough be very important and maybe they could even go the extra distance of turning it a bit more into a visual novel given it could be accessed in the game. Instead of just listening to it as audio, again, they could also have some form of background, sort of imagery and stuff, some art, even maybe just sort of pictures to sort of convey cutscenes in a form of what's going on during it. Now the sixth edition I believe is a must have for this enhanced version is to be able to customise the actual actions of your party members. So throughout the game you are playing solely as Nier, however Kaine and Emil are your supporting characters but they don't really act essentially as a helpful supporting characters because they're more so there just for show. So they do attack enemies, but the damage that they deal is quite minimal and they don't have their own sorts of health bars. At least that's visible and they don't provide any direct support to you, whether that be for potions, healing, other forms of enhancements too. So pretty much you just see them running around and attacking, chipping away tiny bits of damage and sometimes if you see them getting attacked a lot, you can see them sort of in sort of what is like a stasis mode, they're resting and then they'll pop back up but really you have no control of what's going on with them. So if you could add some form of you can actually maybe indirectly control what they do by for example selecting one character to be in more of a healing position, another one into more of an aggressive attacking position, they could go the extra depth and add actual health bars to them so you are required to sort of manage their health and stuff. They didn't do this with Nier Automata though, so maybe they could just leave it as they just act there in more of a supporting role, but again, you're not going to the extent at which you're healing them and things like that, but rather, again, just be able to indirectly control the way that they help you in battle. The seventh edition I believe is must have and is quite likely is to improve the action combat for this game. So given we've seen a lot of improvements to the combat through Nier Automata and both through the modernization of action combat gameplay over the past decade, 
This is definitely leaves a lot of room for them to improve upon that in this original game. Now, Takahisa Taoro, who was the senior game designer for Nier Automata and is from Platinum Games, he's actually working on this game in some form, so through that, we might see the combat improve. One notable part of the combat that I would love to suggest for this point that could be improved is to be allowed to actually shoot with Grimoire Vice while still attacking with Nier. So we saw in Nier Automata, you could actually shoot with the pods, but attack at the same time. Now in Nier, you can't actually do that. You're either shooting with Grimoire Vice and running around with Nier, or you have to stop shooting with Grimoire Vice and then you can attack with Nier. So it'd be great to, again, allow you to be able to do both simultaneously, like with the sequel. The eighth addition, I believe, is a must-have for this enhanced version, is to include and unlock the ability to read the notes of events that take place during the thousand years between the beginning of the game and when most of the game takes place because these are actual notes of important parts in history that revolve around sort of everything that takes place prior to the game but the only way that you can view these within the game is during the loading screens now the thing is they don't actually show up on every loading screen but when they do show up you'll see just like a couple of paragraphs of something that revolves around a part of a story that takes place. It's usually cryptic as to when this may take place, what it's revolving around, but at the same time, if you actually play near on the PlayStation 3 and you put the install data onto your console, which basically essentially loads the game faster during loading screens, you won't actually have enough time to even read these things. And this is actually the only time you can read them. So what I think they should be able to do is one, if there are loading screens in this game and they pop up, the moment they've popped up for the first time, they should be unlockable, whether it's somewhere in the menu and then you can be able to read it at your own leisurely pace, or if they don't have much loading screens, Throughout the game, there should be something that just sort of unlocks, and again, it, whether it unlocks and becomes part of something, a diary entry that you can then read, and at the same time, be able to unlock more so you can learn more about everything that happened in the past, as opposed to just getting a select few here and there that are quite cryptic in nature because you don't know how to connect them and understand really what they're in reference to, unless you actually go and read, for now, the fan translations in the World Art Book for Grimoire Nier. The ninth edition, I believe, will be awesome for this enhanced version of Near Replicant is to update the text-based story segments of the game. So throughout the game there are certain parts of the story that are told through text. Now these are sort of in the form of a visual novel but they are quite bare bones so I think it would be great if they could enhance these similar to what they've done with Near Automata but maybe even go to a step further with like we've seen with the dream sequences in Lost Odyssey and actually one, create a bit more visual backgrounds while you're reading these stories, a bit more sounds, and maybe even create some voice dialogue for those sections too. I just think overall this could really enhance those parts that were not as well received by many players as others have received them in the sequel. And the 10th and final edition I believe would be awesome to add to this enhanced version of the game is to actually include the World of Recycle Vessel DLC pack for the game. So Nier got a single DLC pack and what this included was a selection of levels and stages that you could fight new shades, unlock new weapons and learn a bit about the story of Nier's wife in the actual Western or Xbox 360 Japanese version or for the Japanese PS3 version you learn about Nier's mother. Now through this you also learn some pivotal things about what immediately followed the ending of Drakengar 1 or rather what actually happened in the ending of Drakengar 1 as witnessed by other people. And the weapons that you collect in this game themselves are also directly tied to one specific character from Drakengar 1. So we could sort of elaborate more on this, but the main point about this is that they're not a paid add-on, but rather included. And on top of that, there are some other little additions like some remix tracks, which actually got its own soundtrack behind me, as well as some customizable costumes for Nier, Emil, and Kynat. So to be able to have that all built into this game, I think that would be fantastic. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. There are 10 additions. I would love to see this upgraded version of New Replicant coming to PlayStation 4. Xbox One and Steam, but let me know some of yours, whether that being going on to new things, highlighting some of mine, even expanding upon them. There are a lot of other things that we could touch on, both going into some things that even tie the game a bit more into Nier Automata, as we do know that the voice actors for 9S and 2B, the Japanese voice actors specifically, have actually got a minor voice role in this game. So what that is directly, whether it is actually 2B and 9S having some form of influence in this game, even if it's just them retelling events 
events from their point in time by learning a bit about their past or having some other things. I think, you know, there could be some tie-ins to Nier Automata or again, another game in the series taking place after both. But regardless, let me know your thoughts. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you'll enjoy the 10th anniversary of Nier and everything that's been announced with it. Stay safe everyone, and until next video, stay spot on.